Think about why we're fascinated by history. All those outstanding individuals and exotic peoples, the rise and fall of civilizations, and wondering why that happens. How did the classical Greeks achieve their golden age, the age of Pericles and Socrates, Euripides and Hippocrates? What explains the remarkable confluence of so many outstanding individuals in one cultural era? Jumping ahead almost two millennia, why did the Italian Renaissance happen? Leonardo da Vinci, Machiavelli, Michelangelo, Raphael, again an outpouring of genius in the arts, sciences, and politics. Jumping ahead another three centuries, why did the Industrial Revolution happen with its awesome outpouring of productivity? The classical Chinese and the ancient Romans achieved impressive things technologically, but nothing on the scale of the Industrial Revolution. And why did the Industrial Revolution first take root in England and Scotland? Why not, say, in Burma or Botswana? Or what, by contrast, explains major historical declines? Why did the Roman Empire collapse? The most powerful military empire of the ancient world imploded and became defenseless before successive waves of barbarian invasions. And before the Romans, the powerful military empires of the Hittites, the Assyrians, the Babylonians also failed. Is there a common pattern at work here? Why did the French Revolution go so horribly wrong, descending into a reign of paranoia, fratricide, and terror? And why, by contrast, did the American Revolution, in many ways fighting the same kinds of battles and subject to the same desperate pressures, not go that self-destructive route? And how, a century and a half later, could the most educated nation in Europe become a Nazi dictatorship? All these questions raise issues of dramatic historic change, for better or worse. But we can also ask questions about the long stretches of time during which no significant changes take place at all. Consider, for example, the San people of the Kalahari area in southern Africa. Sometimes they're called the Bushmen. Experts estimate that for 10,000 years, the San people have existed in essentially the same way, generation after generation. Now let's put that in perspective. If a generation is 25 years or so, then 10,000 years means 400 generations of sameness. By contrast, it has only been about 20 generations since Columbus crossed the Atlantic Ocean. And consider how dramatic the changes have been in Europe and America since then. But even the 10,000 years of the San people is dwarfed by the estimated 35,000 years that the Aborigines of Australia have existed essentially the same way, generation after generation. 35,000 years ago is roughly when Neanderthal man was going extinct. Why did the cultures of the San people and the Aborigines not change for such unimaginably long stretches of time? Fascinating questions. I'm a philosopher and intellectual historian by profession, and it is my great fortune to make a living raising and thinking about questions like these. As historians, we study interesting individuals and cultures to learn how they lived, why they lived the way they lived, and what impact they had on the course of human events. As philosophers, we think more broadly and abstractly. We learn our lessons from the historians and ask, are there broader explanations about the dramatic rises and falls of some cultures, or from the static nature of others? History, from this perspective, is a huge laboratory of experiments in human living. Some of those experiments have been wildly successful. Others have led to middling results, leading their cultures to eke out an existence across the generations. And some have been outright disasters, leading to misery and death on a large scale. Can we identify the fundamental causes at work here? Can we learn why some cultures flourish while others stagnate, collapse, or descend into horror? Is there a moral to the story of history? Let's start with one major historical experiment, one that turned out to be one of the darkest eras in human history.